We've made it to day three of the WPT World Championship, my favorite event of the year. It hasn't been easy to make it this far though. We had to survive day one's Table of Doom, which was by large margin the toughest in the field with high stakes legends Nacho Barbero, Jason Kuhn, and Adrian Mateos. I had to battle with the short stack against the best players in the world. Luckily, late in day one, I was able to catch some heat and turn that short stack into one of the bigger ones by the end of the night. This guy runs too good. The tough table draws kept coming, but I was willing to put everything at risk on day two against last year's champion. Oh, wow. wow. What? Fuck. That sucks. Oh, yeah. Wow. How much? Just to be sure. <laughs> I did not wow. expect the snap jab. That's crazy. For Brad Owen. When facing other WPT champions, I trusted my instincts in high pressure situations. I love this from Emma. Doesn't even need to go big. He snaps. Snap cold though from Brad. For most of day two, we ran cold, but made the most of the cards that we were dealt, and ultimately, our patience was rewarded. Please get yourselves a big round of applause. You're in the money. Today, we come back to the win to resume our world championship run. A lot of pressure's off, knowing that we have 18,700 already locked up. The work isn't done though. Maybe in previous years, I would have been happy with just a min cash in a big event like this one. That's not good enough anymore. My sights are set on having my name engraved on the biggest trophy in poker. In a field that had over 3,800 entrants, we come back with only 480 remaining and 36 minutes left in level 15. A lot of people are short, including us. That's okay though, we've been short quite a few times already and have done well to stay alive. First place is almost $6 million. If we make the official final table of six, we'll get a seven figure payout. If we get 48th or better, we'll lock up at least six figures. Here's a look at our table. We've got the shortest stack with only 20 big blinds and there are multiple accomplished pros, but we've already been through the fire with tougher draws on day one and two. This lineup oddly feels like a bit of relief, but it almost doesn't matter because we'll need to run good immediately. Otherwise we could be headed for the exit soon. We find our table. I'm hoping it'll be a long day for us, and perhaps we can turn this bag with very few chips to start into a bag with a lot of chips to keep the dream of a major title and seven figure score alive. The nerves are certainly going as we're about to begin. As always, I give Instagram updates so people can follow along with the action in real time, and we get off to a great start, increasing our stack by about 50% to give ourselves some wiggle room. Last night, so many people held on just to squeak into the money with 10 big blinds or less who are now ripping it left and right to either double up or find the payout line. Less than an hour into play, we've made multiple pay jumps as almost 100 players have busted. While it's enticing to sit back and continuously ladder up, I'm going to make moves as I see fit to put us in position to win the event. If one of them doesn't work out and we get knocked out, I'll have to learn to live with the outcome. We pick up pocket tens in the big blind halfway into the 10,000, 20,000 level. Under the gun, min raises to 40,000. The cutoff calls, we've got 470,000 total. It's less than 25 big blinds. We've got a strong pair, but we're going against the narrow range of the under the gun preflop raiser. I don't want to call just to set mine and turn our tens into deuces. I three bet jam to risk our tournament life. Under the gun will often have two overs. He tanks for a long time, if both opponents fold, that'd be a decent outcome, we'd win a few orbits worth of chips without having to have the best hand at showdown. The player under the gun makes the call, which gets the heart racing. The cutoff folds, we see that we're up against ace-queen offsuit. It's a flip for a pot of over 50 big blinds. I'm 3-3 three three in all wins for this event so far, this is a massive tiebreaker. The flop comes, Jack 10-6 with two diamonds, we flop our first set of the entire tournament and it couldn't have come at a better time. We can't quite celebrate yet though as the opponent still has a broadway draw and a backdoor flush draw. The turn is the four of spades, eliminating the opponent's chances of beating us with a flush. We just need to fade a king and we'll go from having one of the shorter stacks at the start of the day to having a huge stack. The river is the eight of diamonds giving us the double up. It turns out we didn't need that set after all. We beat ace high to get the stack up, cracking the million mark for the first time. We were hoping to run good immediately in order to have a real shot. Even though I'm on very little sleep, and I've got a ton of adrenaline and Red Bull coursing through my veins, this win helps us relax. Well, at least as much as possible under the circumstances. We're dealt pocket kings in the hijack 20 minutes later. Under the gun wastes no time. He raises all in for 15 big blinds. Under the gun plus one isn't quick to give up his cards. 
He has his neighbor slightly covered. He rips it for 430,000. The first two players to act are both all in. This is unbelievable. I wouldn't be shocked if one of them has aces, especially under the gun plus one. But we've got the second best hand in poker and we're not going anywhere. We've got both opponents covered by more than double. I jam for just under a million to make sure that no one else gets involved. It's already difficult enough to have the best hand at showdown in a three-way all-in. We definitely don't want any additional opponents. No one else calls. We reveal our pocket kings. It doesn't come as a shock to either of the two players at risk. Neither of them are too happy though. The under the gun player shows that he has pocket sevens. Under the gun plus one finally turns over pocket jacks. It's a great situation for us to send two players home and win another pot over a million. Neither opponent even has an ace, which is fantastic because the flop comes ace queen nine. No one makes a set, and I'd like to keep it that way. The dealer obliges as the three of diamonds comes out. We just need to avoid seeing any jack or seven, and we'll scoop an enormous pot to have one of the biggest stacks in the tournament. The river is the deuce of spades. We knock out two players with second pair. Our ridiculously hot start continues. Day one and day two both started out slow. Is a nice change of pace. In less than two hours, we have almost six times the chips that we began the day with. As our stack is climbing, the number of players left continues to drop. We're in for two bullets, but after making several pay jumps, we're finally guaranteed a profit with 21,200 locked up. The first full level comes to a close, then we're selected to play on the future table, which adds quite a bit more stress to the situation, but we'll have to be okay with it. Gold bracelet winner in Belgium's all-time money list leader with over 11 million in total live earnings is the chip leader at our table. I'm in a distant second. Other notables include Vogelsang, who recently joined us, and Bet on Drew, who's a well-known streamer and tournament grinder. Early on in the stream, Vogelsang raises to 55,000 from the cutoff. There's a small issue with the graphics during this hand, but we're in the big blind with Queen Jack offsuit. I call for 30,000 more. We're heads up out of position. The flop comes Jack-6-3 Rainbow. We've got top pair against someone with over 30 million in career tournament earnings. I check. The opponent is known for taking his time to consider his options while looking like he might hatch at any moment. Vogelsang bets 40,000 into 150,000. It's a small sizing that he's going to be making at a high frequency. Check raising with top pair is a good option because our hand benefits from some protection since we don't want to see aces and kings come out. Instead, I call to keep bluffs in. The turn is the four of clubs, which allows some straight draws to get there, and in general will be better for our big blind range. At this point, we have no idea if our queen jack is best. Because of that and the fact that equities have shifted quite a bit with another low card on the board, I lead for 50,000 to ensure that one pair hands worse than ours don't check back. The cutoff is strong enough to stick around. He calls as the graphics finally appear. A pair of jacks with a medium strength kicker isn't necessarily a hand that I'm always looking to get three streets of value with, especially as the seven of hearts comes on the river, putting four to the straight out there. I don't expect to see many fives in the opponent's range, but I check to see if we can get to showdown without the pot getting out of hand. If Vogel saying that's anything reasonable, we'll make the call. The cutoff has plenty of showdown value with the second pair. Darth Sidious' nephew checks back. We show our pair of jacks in exchange for all the chips in the middle. We win a pot against another one of the world's best. Next we raise to 50,000 with 10-8 suited on the button. The big blind has some suited connectors that we've got dominated. He calls for a small amount more. We're heads up in position. The flop comes King-10-7 with two spades. We've both got a piece. The big blind checks. We don't want this pot to get too out of hand with our second pair. I check back. The turn is the five of hearts. It's a blank. The big blind checks once more. At this point, I feel comfortable going for value. I make a small bet of 40,000 to get calls from worse hands. The big blind can't strand his pair just yet. He calls, but I don't get the sense that he's all that strong. The river is the king of clubs, making it a lot less likely that he'll have combos containing a king. The opponent checks. I'm extremely confident that we've got the winner given how this has been played. I go with a large sizing of 200,000. I'm hoping that this will look extremely fishy and we can perhaps get called light if the opponent thinks that we're trying to buy the pot since we often won't have a king either. The big blind has a decent hand to bluff catch with. He'd rather preserve his chips and look for a better spot. He makes a good fold. Another one goes our way. We're at a new high point in the tournament with 1.8 million in chips. In this one, the big stack of the table, Davidi, raises to 50,000. 
We're dealt 8-7 offsuit in the big blind. The opponent's a wild man who's the only person at the table who can knock us out of the event. He's also extremely good, so I could make an argument for just folding because 8-7 offsuit is towards the bottom of our calling range anyway, and there will be some tricky spots to play from out of position. I call, which is the most standard play. We're heads up. The flop comes 6-6-3 rainbow. We don't really connect. I check. The opponent has air like you will pretty frequently. It doesn't stop him from betting though. He makes it 25,000. It's the minimum one big blind bet. It's annoying because we've got almost nothing except two overs and a backdoor draw, but we're getting such a good price and we've got 26% equity. I suspect that the opponent might have something like two high cards fairly often. I call with intentions of possibly attempting a bluff at some point. The turn is the deuce of diamonds. 5-4 gets there, which is a hand that we'll have in our range if the opponent won't. I check called flop earlier with top pair and lead turn when a low card came out. That hand got to showdown and the opponent saw it. Here I lead turn for one third pot to fold out the exact type of combo that Davidi might have. It forces him to make a tougher decision. He's generally going to want to fold a large percentage of the time, but what may not be intuitive is that he can mix in calls and a lot of raises with his queen 10 as a bluff even though he doesn't even have a draw. The Belgian pro finds the raise to 180,000 with nothing. We've got nothing though too. I fold immediately knowing that I don't beat a single combination that the opponent might have even if he thinks he's bluffing. I try to get creative and I get punished for it as Davidi navigates his way perfectly through the hand to win the maximum from me. With just 281 players left, my buddy Bet on Drew picks up ace 10 offsuit on the button. He's got a shorter stack with 17 and a half big blinds. The pro, who's sponsored by poker site ACR, announces that he's all in. I can't think of a better time to let you guys know about the online site WPT Global, where I'm regularly playing tournaments and cash games against the softest opponents that you'll find. If you sign up using the bonus code BRAD, you'll receive special deals, including a deposit match bonus up to $1,200 and $50 of extra cash right away if you deposit $100 or more. There's additional information in the description box below. Maybe I'll see you on there. Back to the hand, we look at king-queen offsuit in the big blind. You can see by my face, that this is a stressful situation. We dominate a lot of the hands that the opponent's supposed to be open jamming with, like king-jack, queen-jack, queen-10, king-nine suited, and queen-nine suited. We do okay against his smaller pocket pairs, and even when he has ace-x, we'll often have around 40% equity. The opponent probably wouldn't have open shoved with his really good hands like high pocket pairs and ace king and ace queen type of hands because those are so strong that he'd want to get action and see a flop in position. Still, 440,000 is a big chunk of our stack that we might be risking. Even if we lose, we'll have over 40 big blinds though. King queen offsuit is too good to fold in this situation. I call, expecting to be ahead often enough. This isn't one of those times, but will win a decent percentage against ace-10. My buddy's at risk. The flop comes. Ace-six deuce with two hearts. There's very little drama. Drew has top pair with a 98% chance of winning, while we've got a 3% chance. That's right. There's 101% worth of equity possible in this hand. I start prepaying Drew in order to spark a miracle run out that'll give us the win. The turn is the king of hearts. We're part of the way there. It's one of the few cards that keeps us alive. Gives the opponent a flush draw though, so we've still only got a few outs. Ooh. Okay. That's a very fair Brad king. Owen with the prepay. King of this hearts. Is scary. Yeah, Brad's, <laughs> oh, Brad's scary. a pro. He also knows <laughs> what he's doing with that prepay. Drew just kind of pointing it out. Four out. Yeah. You do have four outs. Doesn't find it. Drew gets the double up through me. I lose almost a third of my stack. That one would have put us at the 2 million mark, but we still have plenty of chips, and a friend of the program stays alive while the rest of the field is dwindling. We can't let losing big pots affect us. We've done great just to survive this long end of the day. There's no reason that things can't turn around either. A few minutes later, an opponent min raises to 50,000 from under the gun. We've got king 8 suited on the button. It's a hand that plays well in position. I call to see a flop. We're heads up. The flop comes 10-5-3 with two diamonds. We've got a flush draw with one over. Under the gun plus one, isn't all that excited about it. He checks, we could bet or check. I don't like betting draws 100% of the time. I check back in this instance in case the opponent's slow playing a monster and it makes it a little more likely that we'll get paid off if we do hit a flush because the opponent would probably expect us to bet our big draws at a high frequency. 
turn is the queen of spades, it's a blank. The opponent gets downgraded to fourth pair. He checks. After he's checked twice, under the gun plus one won't have big hands consisting of top pair or better very often. He can still have some small pairs and ace high hands that are in the lead, so I bet 65,000 in an attempt to fold out some of those while building the pot in case we get called and we're able to hit. We have removal to king queen and straight draw combos, which I also like. In theory, pocket fours is supposed to call a small bet a lot of the time, but in real life, it's not common to see people calling small pairs on a board like this. Under the gun plus one folds, we get our delayed semi bluff through to add some chips to our stack and stay over a million. This isn't a particularly large pot, but each one is incredibly important as we get deeper and deeper with big pay jumps up ahead. It also helps get some confidence back after losing the all-in with king-queen. The player in middle position raises to 50,000 in this one. We're next to act as we look down at king-jack suited. This is close to a pure call for us. I match the bet. Davidi calls in the small blind. The big blind calls as well. We're going four ways to the flop in position. It comes queen 10 7 with two hearts. We've got an open ended straight draw with one over. Checks to us. We definitely want to see a turn card with the amount of equity that we've got. I check back. The turn is the nine of hearts. I'm happy to see it, but it's not quite a clean out because we don't have the nuts with three hearts out there. Checks to us once more. A straight is still a very strong hand and it won't be getting any better. We certainly want to deny equity from anyone holding a single heart. I bet 175,000. The small blind has an easy decision with fifth pair and multiple opponents. He folds. The big blind is the one opponent with a reasonable hand to hang around with, given the fact that he has second pair with flush and straight draws. He knows that he could be drawing dead or slim, and he's not closing the action, so he folds. The initial preflop raiser also folds. A healthy pot containing plenty of chips from all the preflop action comes towards us. We're recovering pretty well after losing several hundred thousand earlier. Our level on stream comes to an end. We lose some of our stack, but the damage is mitigated. We finished the 90 minutes in the same ranking we started, which is second in chips at the table, while Davidi still has a commanding lead. I'm just glad to be back at the outer table again, as only 258 players remain, and blinds are about to be 15,000, 30,000. Things don't quite go as I'd hoped at the outer table. I don't win a single hand, the entire 90 minute level, and we finish with a much shorter stack. The good news is that over 50 players were knocked out, and we at least made some pay jumps. 201 remain, I think we're guaranteed. 27,000 right now. Uh, lost every hand, last level. So, lost over half my stack. I've got 585,000. Coming back to... 20,000, 40,000, just at a really tough table. Tried to bluff Bogelsang. I think I opened middle position with ace nine of spades. Bogelsang is a short stack. He calls in the big blind. Flop comes king six five, rainbow. He checks, I bet 60,000 again. He tank calls. Turn is the jack of hearts. He checks, figure another Broadway card is better for me. I bet 225 to put the pressure on him. He had about 500,000 total and he tanked to use a couple time banks and then he ripped it in and uh, just snapped a little bit. So gotta do some work and uh, double up, but I'm not out of it yet. Just one double up and I'm back in it really. After the break, our stack dips to 465,000 as we open jam on the button to try and steal the blinds with the mystery hand. The big blind is in the tank. He's got a larger stack and he's wondering if he wants to call a 12 big blind shove to possibly beat me and send me to the rails. It turns out he does. The opponent makes the call and shows ace seven offsuit. We have him crushed with ace queen offsuit. We woke up with a strong hand at the right time. Can we hold though? If we win, we'll have 25 big blinds. It all comes down to this. The flop is king six three with two clubs. We've got the queen of clubs, while the opponent isn't holding a club at all, we're in good shape so far as long as we can avoid the three outer or running five four. The turn is another king, it's a bad card because the opponent picks up six chop outs, if another six or three falls, we'll be splitting the pot. The river is the eight of spades, it looks too close to a seven for my liking, but we get a key double up to stay alive in the tournament with only 5% of the entrance remaining. We're no longer under quite so much stress now that we've got 25 big blinds, but if we don't start adding to it, we'll have to continue regularly open jamming and three bet jamming.
The cold streak unfortunately resumes after the ace queen hand. I do my best to stay patient as we continue to make pay jumps. Finally, the table I'm at with Davidi and Vogelsang breaks. I go to a new table where I've got just under 800,000 in chips. I got 35th in this event last year for a payout of 99,600. It's amazing to at least make the top 200 again this year, but man, would it be cool to run really deep and make half a million or more? These are the types of moments that I live for. There's nothing more fun than playing against so many of the top guys while having big payouts already locked up. What makes this even more special for me is that my brother's here filming the event for his first gig with WPT. He captures me 3-bet jam ace-jack offsuit from the hijack. I've got one of the shortest stacks left in the event with 865,000. I wouldn't mind a call so that I can have an opportunity to go into day four with a more manageable stack. Instead, the opponent folds. I also don't mind taking down pots uncontested to increase our stack. I don't get much to work with the last level of the night, but there are quite a few spectators now who want to see the action firsthand. It's a really exciting atmosphere. I'm always happy to interact with people and say hello in between hands, even when I'm nursing a small stack and the stakes are high. The last level finally comes to an end. I have mixed feelings about the day. It's a massive accomplishment to make 12 pay jumps in order to have 37,600 locked up and advance to day four. There are only 132 players left. Early on, we had a huge stack of almost 2 million. I was hopeful that today was gonna to be our breakthrough and we'd potentially finish towards the top with a lot of chips. That's not quite the case. We bagged 730,000, which is only 12 big blinds when we return. Still, it's always special to make a day four, no matter what the event is, but especially the WPT World Championship. We've already battled back from 12 big blinds and multiple points in this event. Hopefully we can do it once again, but we're gonna have to do it sitting at the same table as several more of the world's best, including Lucky Chewy and 2009 WSOP main event winner, Joe Cata, while one of the largest stacks in the tournament is on our left. Tune in for day four in the next vlog, I promise, you won't want to miss it. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you hit the like and subscribe buttons, it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. I've got a bunch of exciting things coming up, including the next episode, day four. We've got almost $40,000 locked up, and I just can't wait to share that. That next video with you guys, I'm playing against some of my favorite poker players of all time, including Joe Cata, and uh, Lucky Chewy, um, but be sure to sign up to WPT Global using that bonus code BRAD. There's deposit match bonuses, there's free tournament tickets and all that stuff if you use that bonus code. And I have more information in the description box below, but right now is the best time to sign up because starting today, uh, Global is doing 100% rate back in March for MTTs. So. Uh, the way that that's going to be set up is if you play any MTT, the rake from that will be held and it'll be included in a free roll or in multiple free rolls at the end of the month, which I have more information for in the description box below also. Couple meetup games coming up. We've got one April 18th at the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. I'll be out there for several days and I'm going to be firing some WPT tournaments out there and then... From there, I go to Austin, Texas. We have a massive meetup game, April 23rd. It's a special low limit one. We're playing one, two. I'll be there. Doug Polk, Andrew Nimi, Mariano will all be playing. And then we'll probably have a handful of special guests as well. So uh, that's that's a lot of, a lot of pretty neat things um, in the foreseeable future. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.